Greetings. Today we're going to be discussing section 9.6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. We are going to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula, and we're also going to find the number of solutions of a quadratic equation. And I think you'll really benefit from this and actually like using the quadratic formula because it is straightforward. So let's talk about what it is. First of all, you want to have your quadratic equation in standard form before using the quadratic formula. Remember, standard form means ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So there should be no numbers on the right side except zero. So when you have your quadratic equation in that form, then you can easily identify the a, b, and c value and then plug them in for this formula. The quadratic formula is in this red box right here. It reads x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And when I learned this quadratic formula in high school, I learned it to the tune of Frere Jaca. Um, there are also more modern versions of that, different songs on YouTube, and I may show you one during class. So an example using the quadratic formula is right here, so I want you to take a look at it. Suppose that 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0, find the solutions. What you do is you line up a, b, and c, and then you easily know that a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative 5. So then, once you identify your a, b, and c, it's simply just plugging into the formula and then doing your operations using the order of operations. So in example 1, we will be seeing how this works. Example 1 says, what are the solutions of x squared minus 8 equals 2x? Use the quadratic formula. I said in the previous slide that it has to be in standard form before you use the quadratic formula, which means everything should be on the left side of the equation. Currently, that 2x is on the right side, so we need to move it over by using subtraction. The reason using subtraction is because it is currently a positive 2x, so to undo that, you subtract. Now, remember, ax squared plus bx plus c needs to be the order, so x squared comes first, the negative 2x comes in the middle, and the negative 8 is at the end, and it is 0 on the other side. So now, it is in the form, standard form, so now let's identify our a, b, and c. a is technically 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 8. So I'll write that on the side. And now we just want to use that quadratic formula and plug everything or substitute stuff in. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b, oh, b is negative 2, so that means we have a double negative there. Hopefully you know what that means. Square root of negative 2 squared, make sure you use parentheses there when you have a negative involved. A is 1 and C is negative 8, all over 2A, 2 times 1. So the number in front we have is a positive 2, double negative means positive, plus or minus square root of 4 plus 32. You see there's a double negative, negative 4 and negative 8 multiply give you a positive 32, and the number underneath is 2. So now we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 36 over 2. This is working out nicely. Um, now square root of 36 is 6, so we can write, I'm actually going to go up here because my screen does not like me writing at the bottom. Um, 2 plus or minus 6 divided by 2. Last step, remember that plus or minus means there's two answers. So x equals 2 plus 6 divided by 2, or x equals 2 minus 6 divided by 2. And now it's just the easy arithmetic. So we have 8 over 2, that equals 4. And then we have negative 4 over 2, which equals negative 2. So the two solutions are x equals 4, or x equals negative 2. And remember, you can always check your answers by plugging them into the original quadratic formula, and if they work on both sides, then you know you got it right. Example one's done. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, what's the application of this? For all you sports fans, this problem is for you. 
This is about shot put. This is kind of like a track event. Um, an athlete throws a heavy metal ball through the air. The arc of the ball can be modeled by the equation y equals negative 0.04x squared plus 0.84x plus 2, where x is the horizontal distance in meters from the athlete and y is the height in meters of the ball. How far from the athlete will the ball land? So a common application of quadratics is throwing some sort of ball in a sport. So we are given the formula, and it is in standard form already. So we can simply identify our a, b, and c values and then plug it in. I'm going to rewrite the formula. And actually, we can make y 0 because, remember, y is the height. And the question is how far from the ball, how far from the athlete will the ball land? Well, when the ball lands, the height's going to be zero. So now let's identify our A, B, and C. And let's use the quadratic formula. So I plug the given A, B, and C values in for the formula. Now you always want to focus on whatever is under the radical first. So under the radical, we have something squared. We need to figure out what that number is. And also, then we need to add the number after that. Do you see that double negative? So in your calculator, you can actually do that part in one step. And I find out that that number underneath is 1.0256. And we'll keep the rest the same. On the bottom, I might as well make that negative 0.0. 0, 8, because when you double that number, you get that. So we're getting pretty close. Um, now, as you can see, there's a plus or minus in the middle, like usual. So that means we have two possibilities. So the first possibility is if we add everything. And when we do that, we find out that x is approximately negative 2.16. Okay, or we can subtract... we find out that x is approximately 23.16. Now let's go back and talk about what does x stand for. It told us in the problem that x is the horizontal distance. So does it make sense to have a negative horizontal distance? The answer to that is no. It doesn't make sense to have a negative horizontal distance. So the only answer that makes sense is the positive one. So that means the ball will land about 23.16 meters from the athlete. Now that you have that conclusion sentence down, we can move on to the next slide. So, I am guessing that you're thinking something like, well, okay, you gave me all these methods, when do I use which method, because it's getting a little bit overwhelming. I understand your predicament, and this is why we're talking about this now. There are many methods for solving a quadratic equation, and here they all are right now. T feel free to pause this right now or later to fill in the blanks. These are the methods that we talked about. Graphing, square roots, factoring, completing the square, which is the previous lesson, and today's lesson is quadratic formula. So when do you use each? Well, for graphing, graphing takes a while. You probably have realized that. So use that when you have a graphing calculator handy. And actually, you're going to be learning this much more so, the graphing calculator in Algebra 2. So you have that to look forward to. Square roots. You want to use the square root method if the equation has no x term. So, like, there's no b value. So it's something like a x squared plus c. An example of this would be um, x squared plus or minus 4 or something like that. There's no b value in the middle. Factoring, if you can factor the equation easily. So remember, last chapter we learned the x method and also the slide divide bottoms up method. So use the factoring process if you can factor the equation easily by using the x method or the slide divide. Completing the square. You want to use the completing the square method if the coefficient of the x squared is a 1, but you can't easily factor the equation. 
So you're looking at a quadratic and you're like, I don't know how to use the x method here. It's not working. And if the coefficient is a, a 1 in front of the x squared, then you would want to use completing the squares like this, something like that. Okay, and then the last one is quadratic formula. This formula will use for any situation. You can use it for anything. The only thing is it takes a bit of, you know, cal calculation. So it's your choice, really, if you want to use the quadratic formula. And now let's look at different examples and problem three and talk about the different methods that we would use. Okay, part A, 3x squared minus 9. For this one, we would want to use the square roots method because, as you can see, there is no x value at all. So we want to write that, square roots, because there is no x term. And we would easily solve this by just adding 9 to both sides, then we get 3x squared equals 9, divide by 3, x squared equals 3, and then you take the square root and you get x equals positive or negative square root of 3. In part b, well this one, let's check out the x method. If we put negative 30 up here and negative 1 on the bottom, we actually can use the x method, which means factoring would be the best option for this situation negative 6 and 5 would be the two numbers that work. So we can write factoring because the equation is easily factorable. The next one, take a look at the number in front. It's a 6. You don't want to use factoring um, there is no, there is an x term, so you can't use square roots, and completing the square would be hard because there is a number in front of the x squared, so I would say quadratic formula is the best option for this one. Or you could use graphing, if you had that graphing calculator handy. And the reason why the equation cannot be easily factored. Okay, a couple more to look at. For this situation, you could use, in part D, you could use the quadratic formula. You could also use complete the square because the number in front is a 1. Or you could use graphing. The reason why we can use any of these methods is because the coefficient of the x squared term is 1, but we cannot factor the equation. And the last situation, quadratic formula or graphing would be an option, either one of those. The reason why is because the equation cannot be factored easily since the numbers are large. You definitely don't want to try to factor that. Okay, so there you have it, different situations using the various methods we have learned in Chapter 9 so far. And you will get used to these different methods as we practice together during class. Now there's one more concept I'd like to talk about before we end this video. It's called the discriminant. The discriminant is the expression under the radical sign in the, the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula is this, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. The discriminant is that value 
right here. B squared minus 4AC. Did you know that that value tells you how many solutions there are for the given quadratic? I think this is really neat. So you can see in your note sheet that we have a chart. This will be your friend when we're doing problems like this. So there's three different options. If the discriminant is bigger than zero, this is the first one you want to write down. If the discriminant is bigger than zero, aka a positive number, there will be two real number solutions. So you want to fill in both blanks. So if a discriminant is a positive number, there are two real number solutions. If the discriminant equals zero, so that's the only number it could be for this situation, there is one real number solution. And the last option is if the discriminant is less than zero, aka a negative number, there are no real number solutions. And remember, a solution is just how many times the parabola intersects the x-axis. So you can see in these pictures right here, there are two intersection points in the first situation. There is one intersection point in the middle situation. In the last one, it does not cross the x-axis at all. One example dealing with the discriminant, and then we will be done. How many real number solutions does this quadratic have? First step is make sure the quadratic is in standard form. So rewrite the given quadratic. Standard form means everything is on the left side, and then there's a zero on the right. So we're going to add five. So we get two x squared minus three x plus five. So in this problem, we are not looking for the actual solution. We are just looking for how many solutions there are. And this will be helpful when you're trying to figure out which method to use. And also, when you get an answer, make sure that you got the right number of solutions. So b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant. So let's identify our a, b, and c. a is 2, b is negative 3, and c is 5. So now we just need to plug those numbers in for the discriminant. So b squared negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, a is 2, and c is 5. Now let's just figure out what this equals. Negative 3 squared is 9, and this number over here is 8 times 5, that's 40. So 9 minus 40, that equals negative 31. So now flip back to your chart on the previous page. And when the discriminant is less than zero, or a negative number, the equation has no real number solutions. That completes this lesson. I know it was a longer one, so thank you for bearing with me and following, and thanks for listening to my voice if you're doing so. You can feel free to try the lesson check that is with this section, or at least make sure you have done the previous lesson check, which is 9.5 day 2. No worries if you are overwhelmed or confused. You can ask me questions when we see each other next. Have a good day.